Hey guys, my name is Aditya and you have tuned into Channel AQ. In today's video, we are going to unbox the Elgato Stream Deck Mini and understand the basics of what a Stream Deck can do. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome to Channel AQ Tech. My channel is about technology, gaming and product reviews. Now, if you think that's your cup of tea, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay notified about upcoming videos and to support my channel. So let's roll that intro and get into the review right away. The Elgato Stream Deck is one of those pieces of tech that you didn't know you needed, but start using it and you'll wonder how you lived without it. I'll be giving you a little more information about what a Stream Deck is actually supposed to do while I'm unboxing the Elgato Stream Deck Mini. The Elgato Stream Deck is essentially a small control panel with either 6, 15 or 32 customizable physical buttons depending upon the version you purchase. The one we are unboxing here is the Mini, which has six buttons. For people who stream their gaming sessions, it's a handy tool to enable multiple controls without having to leave a game to mess about with the buttons, settings, and commands on a different window. The main feature of the Stream Deck is to assist streamers, be that on YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, or whichever platform you use. A Stream Deck can be set up for simple controls that help you remain professional on your stream. That might be an easy access button that quickly disables your webcam or mutes your microphone if you need to gobble up some food or talk to a family member who's wandered into the room. Alternatively, you could set a mute or deafen button for your Discord so you can temporarily stop your friends from being heard and allow you to talk to your audience without interruption. Other useful controls would be to configure these buttons to switch in between scenes on your streaming software such as OBS Studios. Whether switching to an in-game scene from a be right back screen or a scene that just has your camera where you chat directly with your viewers. All these things can be done within your streaming software but you would generally require to alt tab and switch between windows to have this setup. The stream deck makes these actions much more seamless letting you concentrate on what matters the most. Now that we have unboxed the stream deck and understood its basic use Let's look at the software and I will show you how I have set it up on my system to control OBS Studio. All right. So now that we have our device unboxed and connected, I'm going to show you how to set it up on the computer with the Elgato Stream Deck software. So the first thing you need to do is head over to elgato.com and uh, you would find a downloads option to the top right corner. Once we click on this, it's going to take uh, you and ask you to select the product that you have. So we're going to scroll down and uh, select the Stream Deck Mini, which is the one we have. And since we're going to use this on the Windows operating system, Windows has already been selected. And you can download the software. Currently, the version which is available is 5.0.1. So I've been uh, using the Stream Deck for some time now, and I've set up my Stream Deck to my liking and specifications. So I'm going to show you how the software looks and how you can set up your Stream Deck with the multiple features which are available on it. So I'm going to bring up the Stream Deck uh, software over here. This is the window. And I'm going to quickly enable the feed, uh, which is directly from the Stream Deck, which is on my desk right now. And if you can see, um, the, the Stream Deck software shows the exact six buttons, which are on the Stream Deck itself. And this replicates vice versa. So any changes that you make on the software on the system or on the Stream Deck physically will actually replicate across. So for example, if I happen to go into one of the folders I've created here, it will show you uh, that it has gone into the folder on the Stream Deck and at the same time the interface on your software changes. Uh, the way I've set up my Stream Deck here is that I've created multiple folders um, to manage my games and the stream settings for each game. So I'm just going to go through a few of them quickly. So the first button which is highlighted over here, which is this one, is for me to go live on OBS directly. So if I hit that right now, it's going to start live streaming to my specific service, which can be either Twitch, YouTube, or uh, Facebook Gaming. Uh, the second button over here on the right is actually to record. And these are folders which contain all my games. So as you can see, I just double clicked on the folder there, and it actually changed the interface on my Stream Deck as well. So I'm using this like a quick launch option where I just come to my system and Click on a button on my Stream Deck and it launches the game as well as the settings on my OBS are configured as well. 
Now, if we go back, uh, I have similar settings for OBS streams where I can, uh, where I have configured them for each game. Now, uh, the beauty about this is the software is extremely user friendly. So in my case, I mostly use the Stream Deck to control my OBS Studio uh, scenes, sources, and my microphone input and output. Now, to do this, it's pretty simple. You have options over here to control scenes, mixer audio, record, stream, and source. If you're going through this video, which means you already have good knowledge about OBS Studio and what scenes sources mean. But if you don't have that, and if you want to start off streaming, then I have created a specific video uh, with all the basics you need to start your own stream online. And I'll leave a link for it on the top of the screen or in the description below. But in this case, I'm just going to show you how I have set up my stream deck to control my Dota stream, which I stream every night on Twitch. So let's head back uh, up one folder and I'm going to click on the OBS button over here. And I'm going to select the Dota symbol because that's where my stream control comes into picture. And I'm going to bring up my OBS Studio window with my Dota stream in the background. So I'm going to keep uh, the live feed running uh, from the stream deck so that you can see as I'm navigating through the buttons. And you can also see my screen with the OBS Studio window and how this changes scenes on uh, my Dota 2 stream. So currently we are on a scene uh, which is the start scene. And now I have a break scene. I have a live scene and an end scene. Now, if you check my stream deck, it actually has just two of these scenes listed, which is uh, the live scene and the talk scene. Now, this is because the start and end scenes is something that I can directly control from my OBS Studio window, but it's the live and the break or the live and the talk screen that I switch between most often when I'm already live and in game. So what uh, this basically does is uh, if I happen to click on the talk button over here, it's actually going to switch the scenes on my OBS Studio and it takes me to the talk screen for the Dota 2 game. Now, similarly, if I click on the live scene, it's going to highlight that on the stream deck and it's going to switch scenes to the live scene on my OBS studios. Now, there are a few other configurations that I've done. So in case uh, there's an event that happens in the game, or if I have uh, a bit of a time where I need a filler, so that's where I've kept a follow me button, which shows up a banner on the screen, which uh, runs uh, audio in the background. And apart from that, uh, I also have this button, which is called a replay buffer. So OBS has a feature where it can con constantly record the last uh, three or four minutes, depending upon your RAM size, of uh, a specific game that you're playing. And in case there's something really good that happens on a game, which I want to save for later, or uh, which I want to publish as a different video, then I hit that button, and it's going to record the last five minutes of the game if I needed to. Now the button on the top over here on the stream deck is actually for my microphone and this helps me mute my microphone. So when it's clicked, you can see that my microphone goes red and it actually uh, mutes the microphone on my OBS studio. And similarly, if I click on it again, it's gonna start picking up the audio on my OBS studio window. Now the little tick mark shows up because it's actually a multi-action command rather than just muting my microphone. Let me show you what I've done with this. Uh, if we go back to the talk screen, you can see that the transition happens and we are back on the talk screen. Now, what I've made this uh, microphone button do is that it not only disables or mutes my microphone, but also shows up a message on the screen which says be right back and it makes my camera disappear. So when I click on this, it's going to make sure that all these actions are completed. And as you can see in the background, there's a be right back message that shows up and my camera disappears. And the microphone goes red, letting me know that my mic is not on and my audience can't hear me. Now, if I click on it again, it's going to do the actions, make sure that my camera comes back. And once it's done, it shows a green tick and it shows my microphone to be green, which says that my audio is live, my audience can hear me and my camera is seen. So this is a very handy tool when it comes to streaming because almost all the other keys on my keyboard have a specific function or a hotkey, which is assigned to an action or uh, a tool in the game. Whereas uh, if I need to control my stream directly, I would need to have OBS Studio opened up in a separate on a separate monitor. Not only that, but I would need to switch between the applications and sometimes this can be really problematic. So the easiest way to add a specific command or an action uh, to the software is by scrolling through the options available on the right hand side. Now, don't worry if you're not able to find a specific option because the Stream Deck actually has a lot of plugins that you can install. So if you go to the Stream Deck store, which is actually highlighted on the screen right now, 
and you click on it, it's going to open up a window where you can find multiple options of uh, plugins that you can download from. So there's uh, there are multiple applications which actually integrate with the Stream Deck and they have their own plugin which is available. For example, if you happen to use Twitch Studio instead of uh, OBS Studio, I don't know why you would be doing that, but still, uh, if you do that, you have an option to install the Twitch Studio plugin and integrate your Stream Deck with it. Similarly, you have Spotify integration and the list goes on and on and on. So basically there are tons and tons of plugins which you can actually install onto your Stream Deck and they also have categories listed over to the left, such as you have Stream Deck plugins for finance, you've got Stream Deck plugins for specific lighting setups, you've got Stream Deck plugins for smart home use. So this actually is a very versatile device and the more number of uh, developers or uh, the software companies out there who release plugins for the Stream Deck, the more versatile it gets. So overall, uh, the Elgato Stream Deck is a very versatile tool which can be used for many applications, not just for streaming, but it can be used to control smart devices or your smart home. Also, editing tools or softwares which you use on the system using hotkeys, which can be assigned to a Stream Deck and it makes your work really easy and it, it increases your efficiency. So the only problem here is that almost all Elgato products are overpriced. Now, if you head over to the website and check out the prices, they are pretty exorbitant and uh, it's, it's kind of a premium pricing range that they apply to almost all their products. Now, I got lucky because I got the Stream Deck uh, through one of my friends in the United States and uh, he, he got it on a Black Friday deal, which was pretty sweet. I've been using it for quite some time and it has really helped me concentrate more on the software that I'm using or the game that I'm playing rather than worrying more about my stream because I know with the press of a button, it's certainly going to happen on my OBS Studio software and it never misses a button click. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the device. I'm pretty happy that I got it at a cheap price on a Black Friday deal. And if you find a really good deal for this product, then I think you should go in for it if you're a streamer, if you're a gamer, or if you happen to use softwares where you require a lot of hotkeys, this is something that would help you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Hit that subscribe button for more interesting videos in the future. See you guys in the next one. Cheers.